Okay, right now we're going to go over a quick operant conditioning introduction. Um, <clears throat> as you've watched in the Skinner video, uh, I showed a little bit about operant conditioning before for this module. Operant conditioning is a type of conditioning where a specific behavior is reinforced, either rewarded or punished, resulting in an increase or a decrease in whatever behavior that is. Um, it's really loop conditioning. There's a behavior followed by a stimulus. It's not stimulus behavior or stimulus response like classical conditioning. The behavior has to come first and then a reward or a punishment which is considered a stimulus is given. As that behavior continues, that stimulus is continued to be given after that behavior. So it's kind of a looping effect as showed here by the behavior then the stimulus through the loop. Let's take a quick introduction like you saw in the behavioral video I showed you with Skinner. Um, let's take a pigeon, for example. We can shape that pigeon, we can teach that pigeon a certain behavior, whether it's spinning around or it might be um, pecking at a disc. Whatever that behavior is, it first needs to be shaped. We have to mold that desired behavior because a pigeon isn't going to naturally peck at a shaped disc um, or think about competing against another pigeon. So we have to, for instance, teach that pigeon to peck. Perhaps we teach two pigeons to peck, specifically at a ping pong ball. And through this we can get them to play ping pong against each other for rewards, food. Remember Skinner kept his pigeons at about three quarters weight so that they would be able to use food as a natural primary reinforcer. That was the whole idea. So by rewarding su successive approximations, first I'm going to peck once, then I'm going to peck twice at this disc. Um, maybe I get my nose closer to the disc and I get a piece of food. Then I get a little bit closer and peck at it once and I get a piece of food. Um, and as soon as I learn that pecking at the disc gets me food, I'll continue to peck at the disc. By doing this, Skinner was able to teach the simple pecking. Skinner then started using response chains so normally pigeons wouldn't play ping pong against one another. So first Skinner taught peck at the disc, then Skinner taught peck at a ping pong ball, then Skinner taught peck at a ping pong ball on a table, then Skinner taught peck at a ping pong ball on a table against another pigeon, and you only get rewarded if you manage to get the ping pong ball past the other pigeon. That's a response chain. It's a learned series of reactions that follow a sequence to produce an otherwise unnatural. Pigeons aren't going to play ping pong out on their own naturally. Um, I know that I'm going to get a few dislikes on that simply because there are some pigeons that really like ping pong, but usually those are cartoon pigeons. So we'll move on. The last thing I want to talk to you about real quick so you can complete your simulation today is schedules of reinforcement. Um, schedules of reinforcement are very important to produce a behavior um, and continue allow that behavior to continue to last. F so first off we have a fixed ratio. There are fixed schedules of reinforcement, there are variable schedules of reinforcement. Some are based on a ratio or the number of responses. Some are based on an in interval or the amount of time. So a fixed ratio schedule of reinforcement is giving an individual or giving a subject a reinforcement after a predetermined or a set or a fixed number of responses. So for instance, when you go to Moe's, you buy nine burritos, you get the 10th burrito free, that's a fixed ratio schedule of reinforcement. So we have a fixed interval schedule of reinforcement. The reinforcement or reward has to occur after predetermined or fixed amount of time has passed. So for instance, if you have a part-time job and you go and you pick up your check every two weeks from work, that is a predetermined amount of time that you get to pick up your check. Um, it has nothing to do with how many hours you worked. It's you get your reward after the time has passed. Um, to continue, a variable ratio of reinforcement is a reinforcement or reward after a random number or a variable number of responses 
has occurred. So playing a shop slot machine is an excellent example. We might pull the slot three times and get a reward. Then we might pull the slot 17 times before we get another reward. Then it might be one more time before we get a reward. Then it might be 27 times. It's a random number of responses over time. Finally, if we talk about a variable interval amount of time, there's a reinforcement after a random amount of time has passed. Um, so that pop quizzes. You might have a pop quiz tomorrow. You might have a pop quiz three weeks from now. You might have a pop quiz tomorrow and on Monday and on Tuesday and then not have another one for a long period of time. Um, it's a random amount of time. It can be very short. It can be very long. But it's that variable, meaning random, interval, meaning time. That is this square that you see here is probably the easiest way to compartmentalize how schedules of reinforcement operate. If you can put fixed at the top, variable at the bottom, ratio on the left and interval on the right, you should be able to always get these right on any kind of exam that you have. Thanks for watching. Now it's time to try simulation.